live from Denver, Colorado. It's the Cube covering Commvault Go 2019. Brought to you by Commvault. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Commvault Go 19 from Colorado. Lisa Martin here with Stu Miniman. Stu and I are pleased to welcome somebody who knows a lot about Commvault from a couple of different angles. We have Andrew Cochran, Solutions Architect at Softcat. Andrew, welcome to the program. Hi Lisa, it's Stu, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So you have familiarity, more than familiarity with Commvault for a long time. You're at Softcat now. You've been there since the beginning part of this year. But you've been working with Commvault on the customer side for a long time. Let's start there with just giving us your history of what you guys do, what you were doing with Commvault on the customer side before we get into the partnership with Softcat. Yeah, yeah, so um, I started working with Commvault about five years ago. Um, I was working for a large global company, um, headquarters in the UK around research and development. Um, and we had uh, a lot of different siloed backup technologies. Um, and we had a, a big problem with data growth. Um, so I, I ran a project there to, to, to find a solution that would help us with that in the day that we were doing it, but then also as we grew, and as we had big plans to grow, um, our data, we were growing about 60% on average year on year. Um, so we had a, a major challenge with that data boom. Um, so uh, I started working with Convault, we selected that as a tool set, um, and we implemented it and sort of were able to reduce our backup down to uh, a much more controlled environment, much more automated, um, and increase our backup success and our restore success dramatically from sort of, our SLA was, we didn't have one actually, um, but it was probably more around 50% up to sort of the 99% success rate. Um, and then we, we started that journey and it was definitely a partnership um, with, with Convot then from a customer angle because we saw backup as day one. And then it was really how can we progress that and move from data protection to data management. So we started looking at what we now refer to as orchestrate and activate. Um, so orchestrate, really looking at how can we move workloads. Um, initially it was between sites or it might be for disaster recovery scenarios. And then obviously now the cloud. Um, and then we started looking at activate um, because we realized we had a challenge of our data is growing more and more. We can protect it, which is great, we can move it, but we didn't really know what it was. We knew we had stuff, we knew we had a lot of it, um, but when you start drilling down beyond the file types or the sizes of, is it sensitive, is it person identifiable, is there risk with this data, do we need it, can we delete it, we didn't know. So that's where we started looking at Activate. Um, so that's kind of where my journey started to end as a customer when we started to get involved with Activate. Um, I sort of left that when uh, we were sort of end of the POC phase, so we knew it could do what we wanted it to do. It was then a matter of scaling that. Um, and then, yeah, I joined Softcap beginning of this year um, to take on a new challenge as a partner. All right, so great learnings you had as the, as the user now. You can, you can relate with your customers even more. Uh, just give us a thumbnail sketch of, of Softcat and how, how the Commvault partnership uh, you know, fits into the overall business. Yeah, so Softcat are a UK partner uh, we, around infrastructure and services. Uh, we're one of the leading UK partners. Um, and we, we cover a broad range across hybrid cloud, network, uh, security, digital workspace. So we cover a, a wide gamut of different technologies. Um, and and Convol are one of our key uh, vendors that we work with, um, and really uh, one that we um, work a lot with around the data management piece, um, and discuss with customers the challenge that I had as a customer, um, and we share that with, with, with them and discuss Convol and how that can help them in their challenges. The, the role that you now have with Softcat, what part of your experience with Convault on the customer side attracted you to shift over to Softcat and partner and be a partner, feel free to partner with Convault. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, uh, my whole career up to this point, so about 20 years, has always been from a customer side in different organizations, different sectors. And, and I'd kind of, I'd got to the point where I, I'd done a lot of different roles. I'd been different infrastructure roles, different end user compute roles. I'd, I'd been on service desks and it, into the architecture world and I'd kind of had a, a good round of experience but I thought I'd never experienced the channel or a vendor. So I, I wanted a new challenge and um, Softcat had this solution architect role which was ideal and I thought actually seeing in the channel and I suppose still being close to the customer and being able to understand their challenges and what they're trying to do because that's been my whole career to that point. 
um, but then also starting to form relationships with the vendors that were different um, and sort of having that closer relationship that being able to I suppose amplify almost my voice because I can have one voice as a single customer but now I see even in 10 months I think I'm into triple digits of customers so I can start to amplify that voice of saying it's not just one it's all of the customers that I represent and almost starting to to be that go between between the customer and the vendor and I thought that was a really interesting challenge and something that I'd be good at hopefully um, and it, it really attracted me to start to sort of sit in that space and start to meet more customers, see their environments, their challenges to see was my experience unique or is everybody having the same sort of challenges and aspirations and, and start to work together to, to try and help solution design around those. Great. Uh, so Andrew, I'd lo love you to bring us inside some, some of those conversations you're having. Yeah. Uh, we, we've been having conversations this whole week about you know, the new Commvault, they've got some new products uh, yeah. like Metallic, very much a uh, partner-driven activity. Um, you know, wh which of the products in the, in the Commvault portfolio uh, are resonating most with your customers and what have you heard this week that you want to make sure uh, that you're bringing back to your users? Yeah, so I suppose before this week, the two that really resonated were uh, complete and activate. Um, complete, obviously for that, almost the, the stuff that we have to do. We need to protect that data, you need to be able to recover it. So that's always going to be, I think, a conversation in any organization. Um, the activate one is, is a really interesting discussion point, actually, and it's something which, from my experience before as a customer, I bring into a lot of the conversations I have with my customers, and it's really trying to understand Yes, you might protect it, but do you understand it? And really, like I said, the challenge I had as a customer, and quite a lot of organizations don't. They don't have that understanding or that ability to automate things, or they might be early on that journey. So it's really, I try and take a slightly different tact of trying to understand the business, work with not only, traditionally it would be our infrastructure contacts, but also trying to say, actually, can we speak to legal, to compliance, to governance, to HR, because, data in particular when you start considering things like GDPR and other regulatory bodies, it's not an IT problem, it's, it's the whole organization and actually we find that Activate is a good way to start to have that discussion with customers. Um, so I suppose that was up to this point and then obviously um, now the last couple of days, I think the one that I'm looking forward to will be Metallic. It's not yet outside the US, but I'm waiting for that time because we definitely see a space with SMBs where they want the power of something like Commvault, but they also want the simplicity to deploy it, to operate it, um, and I think Metallic has a really great play there. Um, I've seen it over the last couple of days a few times, and I think it's looking really powerful. Yeah, Andrew, I'm curious, you, you've talked about the, the products that are resonating with your customers. How many of them are really on the defensive when it comes to data? And, you know, I'm worried about protecting, I'm worrying about government, versus those that are saying, okay, you know, I want to be data-driven, I'm going through digital transformation, and therefore, you know, understanding and leveraging my data is a key part of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's a mix I've seen um, so far, and it really sort of comes down to the sector they're in. I find that the, the sectors that are more governed tend to be more around that security and that protection side. Um, the, so like gov uh, sort of government, healthcare, um, the, sort of anything sort of federal or anything like that, they seem to be much more um, protection orientated. Um, anything more in the private sector is definitely that transformation. And that's where we have a lot of discussions, whether it be a digital transformation, a hybrid cloud, it's definitely more data driven. Um, and it, it's interesting seeing those two different perspectives. Um, but I think at some point they will start to merge. Um, at some point I think it's just where those sectors are at the moment. Where would you say Customers are, you said you're working with triple digits. So yeah. say 30 plus, or no, 100 yeah, hundreds, plus customers. Yeah, like, wait. It's been a busy 10 <laughs> months. <laughs> That's a lot, That's yeah. a lot of businesses. Where would you guesstimate they are with respect to readiness for GDPR? Or we, we, I heard some stats recently, you know, 70% of organizations are still aren't really ready or really fully able to address that. Your take from a UK standpoint? Yeah, I, I think, I, I'm not sure of the stats, but I, I, from what I've seen, I think you're right, it's probably a high percentage that aren't compliant or ready for it. Um, I, I think the main thing is to address that and I suppose be aware that you're not ready and to start on that journey because a lot of the regulatory things is about being on that journey and starting it and knowing that you've got a roadmap to get to, to be, there is no real 
nirvana of being compliant. It's a constant rolling, and it's a matter of starting that journey, identifying the processes, building a virtual team of, like I said, all those different people within an organization, um, finding out what data you have, but almost that comes after you've almost identified the problem, and the technology will come after to try and help you go through that. And yeah, I, I find a lot of the organizations that I've met so far, they're not, they're not really ready for that. Um, I think there's still a little bit of a way to go um, with all the different, because you've got GDPR, we've got CCPA that's going to come yes. any day now, yep. um, which, yeah, I don't think a lot of organizations are ready for it, but it's a matter of starting that journey. Is it part of the advisory services that SoftCat delivers is to help them understand like you said, there's no, there's no recipe for how to get ready, but obviously, you mentioned CCPA, that's probably the tip of the iceberg of yeah. more privacy um, laws that are going yeah. to be enacted. So, looking at the fines that are there, how do you advise customers, I'm sure it depends, right, on, on how ready or, or not they are, but what's SoftCast sort of prescription for helping customers, like, hey, you've got to get, here's a place to start because GDPR has been around for a while, other things are coming, and if you're not compliant and, and a compelling event happens, there's a tremendous risk to a business. There is, yeah, yeah, and I mean, this is a financial risk, but it's also that impact, actually, of if you do get audited and not compliant, is that can have a really detrimental effect, especially on a, a, a brand. Um, so yeah, I mean, really, we, we go in and we try and, first of all, identify where an, an organization is, and that's across the board. We try and identify the problem of where are you, what do we need to do? What are, are there any sort of business challenges that we might have? Any objectives? Anything that we're trying to do, as well as just getting compliant? Um, and then really, it's trying to help formulate a plan. And the first place that we start is building a team of different people, um, of identifying even if we might not know where it is, but identifying the types of data you'll have, where it might be stored, what we think are the risky points, um, and starting to work from there really of trying to formulate a plan of where you need to start actioning things. Um, because some organizations, even if they can't put their finger on it, they'll have an idea of where it might be. Um, so it's starting to help formulate that plan, formulate the teams that can bring different perspectives because IT can bring in the technology side but they might not be as okay with the legal aspects. And so therefore you need legal, you might need HR because they'll understand the, the employee side. You might have customers, so you might need customer relations to understand what are the customers, what data do we keep with them. So you need all these different aspects to try and get them around the table to start to understand almost what the problem is within each organization. And there's some things which are common but every organization has a slight unique part to it, there might be more um, sort of experience in one area, less in another, so it's about balancing up that risk of where you then need to focus on. So a Andrew, uh, I heard at the, at the partner keynote uh, on Monday, they, they yeah. talked about some new initiatives, uh, some new incentives, especially going after new logos. You know, you've only been on the partner side a relatively short time, but curious your reaction and your organization thinking about some of the, 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 the changes that are happening in uh, the go-to-market from Commvault standpoint. Yeah, yeah, the, the partner exchange day was a great day and I think a lot of good announcements for the partner world. Um, yeah, I mean really it's ways to engage with Commvault better. Um, I think the marketing that has been talked about is a really big thing. Um, I think making Commvault stand out from everything else on the market, showing those brands that we can go and talk to our other customers about. Um, Sanjay's mentioned, I think, a couple of times as well about debunking some myths about Commvault being complex. That's one that I have to address many times when I go into organization. So it's great from a partner aspect to see that Commvault are getting those things head on really, because that will help Commvault, but also the partners and also those customers, because I feel more customers can enjoy their great technology. Um, so yeah, I think that they're doing a lot of great work for the partner and the channels. I'm sure your perspectives as a longtime Commvault customer and now a partner are going to be invaluable to the relationship. So we thank you, Andrew, for coming by theCUBE and talking with Stu and me about Commvault and SoftCat and lots of exciting things on the horizon, I'm sure. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been great to be at Go. It's been a great event. It is a great event, yeah. isn't it? Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Commvault Go 19.